Good morning, my seamless friends. Um, this is Miss Stacy coming to you from my house. Isn't this so strange? I'm sure you've talked a lot with mom and dad about this um, time that we're in right now, that um, it's safer for us not to be going places. And so um, we're gonna send you the lesson each week on a video. Um, we encourage you guys to watch it on Sunday with your mom and dad. Um, and it's kind of neat, everyone just think for a minute about one or two people in your class that you really miss. Um, and think they might be watching this the same time as you right now. Um, you can even ask mom and dad if maybe you guys could have a watching party and you guys could video chat and talk over the phone um, while you listen to the lesson and then you could talk about it. Um, but isn't it such a privilege? Um, most of us are able to still um, get together um, over the internet um, and get to meet and see each other. God, that we are given you know, tablets and phones and computers to be able to do that. I'm thankful for technology this week. Um, so just like we do every week, let's teach mom and dad our special prayer that we do before we start our story. So God, give me ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart that is open to hear your word. How'd it go? Good. Let's try it one more time. It's mom and dad's first time. God, give me ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart that is open to hear your word. God, we thank you so much for technology, um, for the privilege that it is to be able to have and to still be able to meet together. God, we thank you that where we gather in your name, that your spirit is with us. And even though we're physically not together, God, that in spirit we are together um, in your name. So we just thank you for that. We thank you that you love us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Um, we're going to do one quick thing differently um, before we start. Um, I hope you guys know um, and mommy and daddy know that um, if you go, um, you're on our YouTube channel right now. Um, if you go back to the homepage and go to the playlist, um, you can look at um, the songs that we've been learning this whole semester. So you guys can sing them together. You can teach mommy and daddy the movements. Um, and when we do get to finally get back together as a church, um, we will figure out a time for us to be able to still sing together um, and, and um, sing worship and lead worship for the church. So um, before we start, I just want to make you think about one thing really quickly. Um, I want to give you some encouragement. So I want to make your heart brave. Um, there is a book in the Bible near the end in the New Testament after Jesus has already died and gone up to heaven and been resurrected. Um, it's called First Peter. So it's a letter to the early church and he's talking to people that are in exile. So they're living in a country in a land that's not their home country. They're not, they're, um, we would say they're displaced. So they're in a place that they don't feel like they belong. Um, and that's kind of how I have been feeling this week a little bit. I'm not able to do my normal routine. I can't go to the places I normally go. Um, and God even tells us that we are exiles on the earth, that our final place is not here, but with him in heaven. Um, so in first Peter, Paul or Peter, sorry, <laughs> Peter is writing to the church and he says, um, cast your cares on him. So the big feelings of emotion, um, worry, doubt, anxiety, sadness, um, I've, I love being around people, so I've just been feeling sad this week um, to not be able to go out and um, get a hug for my best friend. Um, so he says to cast our cares, those big feelings on the Lord, because why? Because he cares for us. Um, knowing that God ultimately cares so much for us, and he's not doing this out of... Um, anything other than our good. So um, I hope even though it might not feel that way that you can be encouraged and just know that God wants you to pray to him. We can talk to God in prayer and he can speak to us through his word. Um, so on that note, we're going to go to our story. So if you guys remember, we're in the Old Testament. So the very first big part of the Bible before Jesus was born, it's a lot about the nation of Israel. There's a really good video on the playlist for this week um, about the all the way through the Old Testament. So you guys can watch that with mom and dad. Um, it just reminds us of all the stories that we've been through so far in the Old Testament. Um, but right now we're in a book of the Old Testament called First Samuel. 
So does anyone remember who Samuel was? You know, I bet I can guess who has their hand raised. Wren or Lily or McKenna. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the period of Samuel, Samuel was a priest and he worked and he was under Eli in the tabernacle he, when he was really young. And then when Eli passed away, Samuel became the priest. And um, he was considered a judge of Israel and he, he was the judge right before Israel got their first king. So that's the story that we're looking at today. We're gonna to go look at that today. I'm gonna to have some pictures up on the screen so you can see what I'm saying as we talk through God's word. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it. The Bible says that Israel wanted a king because they wanted to be like the Canaanite nations that surrounded them. God wanted to be Israel's king and be with them as their present help. But as God told Samuel, his priest, Israel had rejected God. They wanted a physical person, someone they could see and talk to, to rule over them. God was going to do just as the people asked, but he knew how serious this decision would be. So first, God gave Israel a warning. He said that the king would send their children to war, put them to work making supplies for war, take the best of their crop and give it to his own servants to serve his own house and use all of their supplies for his own gain. But the people had made up their mind. They wanted to be like all the other nations. They wanted a human king. So God, being able to see all of time and know everything that was gonna happen, allowed them their king. We will see in the rest of the Old Testament how this decision will play out for Israel. So now in the story, we meet a man named Saul. The Bible tells us that Saul was tall and handsome and young. And if you really think about all of those words, they tell us about what Saul looked like on the outside. Doesn't tell us anything about what's on the inside. Samuel the priest met Saul as he was looking for an animal of his father's that had been lost. But God was going to use Saul as Israel's first king. That day, Samuel ate with Saul, and after the meal, Samuel anointed Saul as king over Israel. And the Bible says that God gave Samuel another heart. And you might have heard this before, because elsewhere in the Bible, God says that if we decide to follow God and believe that Jesus died for us, that God will replace our heart of stone with a heart of flesh. He gives us a heart that's led by his Holy Spirit to think about things of God, that wants to do things to glorify God and to please God. Now this is where the story gets a little bit more interesting. A couple of days later, Samuel called all the people of Israel together and Samuel told them that they were going to cast lots, which is like tossing dice to see what number you get in order to determine Israel's first king. He called the tribe of Benjamin, then the clan of the Matrite, and then the house of Saul's father. But when they went to announce and show everyone their new king, do you know where Saul was? He was hiding in the luggage. He was hiding in all the bags. Now, this was not a great sign for Saul. If we talked earlier about how Saul looked on the outside, this showed everyone that on the inside, Saul was scared and worried and anxious. And it's okay to feel those things, but instead of taking that to God, Saul decided he was going to hide. When it was time for him to step up and lead the people, he was hiding in a corner so no one could see him. So we're going to see over the next couple of weeks in this new type of learning, the type of king that Saul would become. 